And I'm here to introduce three incredibly talented human beings that are local. That's always the name of the game with anyone we're bringing in is to have a local, local community member and creative thinker, thought leader. Um, let me read a little bit about each of our speakers in the order you see them on the screen, left to right. Garrett Bryant. Garrett is a poet, an artist, editor, and teacher, born and raised in Alpine, California. He currently lives and writes from Denver while also working for Ligature Creative. Garrett is a contributing editor of Poetry International and editor and art director for Lockhorn Press. Can't wait to hear from Garrett here. Eleanor Perry Smith is our second guest. Eleanor is a long name, so she says on her bio. Eleanor has reoccurring dreams. Uh, Eleanor is in, <laughs> this is a funny bio to read, I realize now that I'm reading it. Eleanor is in favor of repetition, also rhyming verse. She is a poet and writer. Sometimes that's the same thing. Yet when she recites her poems, they sing and arguably so does she. Can we hear from Eleanor as well? And thirdly, Mike Acuna. Mike is a youth advocate, hip hop artist, and educator that resides in Denver, Colorado. He's currently working alongside the Office of the Independent Monitor facilitating minimizing implicit bias workshops between police and youth and helping with community outreach. Take yourself off mute. Let's do our best to give these three humans a round of applause. If you're willing to show up on video, that's even better. Hello. Hi guys, good morning. Morning. Thanks for joining. How's everybody doing? Awesome. Doing good? Should we shake it out, do a little dance number? Or should we just get into it? <laughs> I wanted to explore with our performers, first and foremost, a conversation around stress and thinking about creative transformation as a product of stress or a way to allow us to navigate stress. So I just wanted to explore a bit of a, um, a panel discussion. And then we have the good fortune of each of them performing a piece of their work for us. And then we'll settle into a little bit of Q&A afterwards where we all can get into a conversation. And if there's uh, value in it, we may end up in some breakout groups with each of, um, each of the, our spoken word poet guests. Um, just to kick things off, I'd love to hear from each of you. Take a moment to tell us a little bit about your world and your forte and how you are, uh, say, creating art or contributing value in the world currently. But tell us what has been the most stressful experience, say, in 2020, since the beginning of the year, what has been the stress in your world that stands out and stands apart from the rest of it? Um, I mean, I think that's a difficult question to um, answer because it's a number of things. I would just say 2020 itself has been the biggest stress for me. <laughs> I feel like, you know, there's every day there's something new to, you know, that's going to cause some new stress in, in that day um, or the way that I go about that day. Uh, obviously, COVID-19 and, and everything that all the ripples from that um, continue to be a constant stress on everyone. I think it's one thing that like easily unites us all. We can all kind of understand um, the way that that affects us. And, you know, I don't know if like me and my world, just the way I approach it is taking every, you know, each day one at a time, not trying to really plan for anything in the future and just, you know, do what I can to um, take breath, um, you know, look at what I have around me, what, what do I have to be grateful for, um, kind of take note of, you know, each, each individual piece of the day, each moment. And, um, that's kind of, like, I guess what like helps me get through it a little bit. So I don't know. That's a really tough question to, I can't like pinpoint one thing that's been the most stressful, um, cause it's kind of a daily, each, each day is a different challenge, you know? There's kind of a new stress each day. Well, good. I like it. Eleanor, tell us a little bit about your world and one of your, one of the, the standout uh, 
moments or experiences of stress for you in the last six to eight months? Sure. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, I think that for me, the stressful thing, just to acknowledge the times right now, was when these different things started to collide, the pandemic and the protests of Black Lives Matter. And we were getting ready to go to Wisconsin and go there often. My husband's from there. And we stay with my mother-in-law, who's awesome um, and healthy, but also, you know, approaching 70. And we're like, okay, how do we support and lend our voice to this Black Lives Matter movement and be there, but also not like expose her to something and you know our almost two-year-old daughter we're like I don't know it's a bit of a conundrum of like we're supposed to stay at home but this is a really important time to be out and show your face too and it's just stressful to be like where do I fit into this and what can I do and um, what's the most important thing and we came up with a good solution when we were in Wisconsin and I'm happy about it we're like okay um, so Webster X is this rapper in Wisconsin and Milwaukee and he's really talented and he organized a bike ride protest and it was a lot more spaced out and it was during the day and it was just like perfect we're like that's it that's like something we can at least show up for at the moment I mean a lot of people I commend them for being like okay pandemic whatever this is more important but for us it just wasn't that easy it was stressful it's like okay we're here for a month how can we be involved but not be um, selfish in our decisions and so it was just you know just a little bit of puzzle pieces so if that's my most stressful moment, I feel pretty, pretty privileged because a lot of people have lost a lot, but I've kind of, kind of kept things some, going the best I can. The rug hasn't been pulled out from under me, not yet at least. Is our friend Mike back? Do you hear me, Mike? Sorry for the madness and the chaos. Easy going, easy going. Um, this has been stressful a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, trying to get logged back onto my computer and get everything going. But um, other than that, I think that the thing that has been like most stressful within this process is uh, loss of a family member. Like I lost my father a little bit uh, earlier within this pandemic. And then within that uh, processing it creatively and artistically has been something that has actually been very therapeutic. Um, just because it's allowed me to kind of reevaluate kind of the whole situation and who I was within the situation. So it's been an ongoing process. It's still an ongoing process, but, you know, and then, you know, with everything that happened with uh, Black Lives Matter, um, being engaged in some of those movements and organizing conversations, things like that, all of that has been different points of stress. And I think that, um, you know, I've been able to kind of tap into creativity as a way of really kind of dealing with some of these uh, moments of stress that I've been in. So, um, yeah, very much still processing and very much still going through it, but still like mastering kind of self within it. Yeah, I'm sorry for your loss, my bud. I mean, it's gotta be, it's, gotta, it's a heavy, it's a heavy uh, time to be alive, let alone lose someone so close to you, so. Sending you love there. For each of you, and and I can call on someone, but there's only three of you, so someone can step in and and just and just take the reins on the response. But through your stressful experiences recently, how have you drawn on creativity more more specifically? If you can give us a couple of different examples of how has creativity helped you get through it? And then the next question, just to contrast it, is the next question is what is on the on the tail end how does stress yield creativity as an outcome like an artistic expression a work of art whatever it may be so first and foremost what have you done that's what 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 have you called upon in your creative realm to manage stress and then we'll get to that second half in a moment um i'll jump in i you know <laughs> Speaking of stressful things that occurred, um, a stressful moment. I don't know if it was as stressful as it was sorrowful, but someone really close to me lost her baby during the pandemic. And that was just like gut-wrenching and one of the hardest things, yeah, I've ever had to go through. And 
the great part was to make space for that. And I started a bit of songwriting and then I dedicated this song to her unborn baby. And that just felt good to give that person space and a moment. And yeah, so it just felt good to play the guitar because it, you know, music has a language that surpasses anything written and uh, just like cut straight to the core. So that was nice to just kind of like, just play chords and just zone out. And that was super helpful. And then I've been really, life has been kind of all over the place. And so I've gotten really sloppy with my creativity in terms of like the, you know, paper napkin poem and the like post-it note and just like little pieces of paper everywhere, which isn't usually how I do things. Usually I have journals and I try and like keep some order, but like everything in my life has just gotten really sloppy and I'm okay with that. And so I'm just going with it and it's been working well and it's been a nice release. Does that answer your question? Sure. Creative ways you're navigating stressful times historically or in the last six to eight months? Yeah, my, um, I definitely hear that, <laughs> Eleanor. I, I think like finding just space to kind of sit and have some sort of, you know, any, any type of like creative release is really helpful for me. It's, it's really cooking um, or writing, uh, even reading. Reading for me is like a creative uh, kind of escape, if, depending on what it is, right? Like I've been consuming way too much news, um, which I, I think I'm sure everyone has kind of maybe been doing that. So when I actually make space um, for reading, you know, poetry or reading fiction or something like that, it's kind of like a nice creative escape and then cooking and writing. And those are kind of the three things that I think I lean on the most um, for like, a you know, to help me navigate stress or to help me kind of, um, you know, digest it and distill it and figure out like what it is deep down that, you know, what's rooted in that, like what is the fear that's causing it. Um, and yeah, that's kind of how I approach it at least or how I have been. Mike, what about you? Um, me personally, it's been um, a lot of journaling. Uh, and then those journals become, you know, songs in a variety of different ways or, you know, sometimes it becomes poetry. Um, but a lot of uh, my, my moments of uh, clarity has come through in my writing, um, whether it be poetry, short stories, music, and um, that's been very therapeutic just because I've been able to go back through some of it and kind of see where I was at and and use that as a way to kind of push myself forward. So um, that and, you know, really getting to a, a place of like practicing mindfulness. Um, tai Chi has been something that I've been able to kind of tap into to kind of keep me centered. But it's an ongoing type of, you know, meditation of creation. And um, it's very much an outlet for me. I'm curious for everybody else listening in, if you want to chat in in the comments, the creative ways or creative outlets that you're calling on or utilizing to navigate stress in your life. What are those for you guys? And uh, I've heard some, some great examples of things we can, we can tap into to, to navigate stress. Um, I'm curious if you could think a little bit about the experience of stress in general just zoom out three of you zoom out and explore stress as a component of our lives because yes there's new stress fresh stress uh unique stress currently that maybe none of us have ever experienced uh, and then there's some stresses that are ongoing and then there's just stress at large as part of being a human being but if you were to step outside yourself and advise yourself or coach mentor, support somebody in your life who's going through stress. How do you see creativity and stress working together? And what's, the, what's that dance like between stress and creativity? What's that relationship like for, for each of you? Um, for me personally, it's fuel in a, in, a, in a variety of different ways just because um, so much of my art, I feel I connect to my emotions. And I feel because um, I'm able to get that out, 
it, it may make it a little bit more relatable to somebody else who may be going through some similar experiences, but I know that the anxiety and stress that I've gone through in the past has been fuel kind of like energy um, that I've kind of converted in, into like art or really just self-expression. Um, and I utilize my journals to kind of backtrack and go back through uh, where I was at that point. And the ways that I like actually write is in a way of like, even if I'm going through something negative, I, I come from an approach of an optimistic mind and in rewriting kind of the negativity that I might be going through in the moment. So I think that, you know, depending on where you're at, journaling, writing, expression in general, um, you can utilize it as a way to kind of change the narrative of where you might currently be and maybe go in a more positive direction of where you might want to go, you know, and I, and, you know, that's hard for most people, but I think that that's where I found a lot of my strength in my creation is being able to control the narrative and who I want to be in the moment. Yeah, I try and define the source of the stress, like, is it external or is it internal? And that's kind of how I deal with it. Um, and sometimes the stress is self-imposed, like a self-imposed deadline or an event is coming up. And I find that kind of stress can be really useful because it's like the saying, if you wait to the last minute, it just takes a minute to do it. And uh, like, I remember I was writing a poem for my cousin's wedding and I, it was total garbage for a long time. And then it was like a couple nights before, I was like, nope, this, none of it's good enough. And I stayed up super late and I hammered it out and it was perfect. And so I find that like, just not accepting the thing that you want to be done as done can be stressful because you're just like, I'm over it, but it creates like a pressure cooker. And then the other side of that pressure cooker is if I'm not creating art and I'm not creating time for the release and these external forces are coming at me and getting in the way of my creativity, I just kind of get angry, you know, and like, it just becomes like a beehive inside and then boom, like it's going to come out eventually because it has to, it's something I have to do in order to feel okay. And so, yeah, I try and like determine is this, is this internal, is this psychological stress? Is it gonna just come out? And you know, sometimes those ebb and flow, but. Eleanor, tell me how long did it take you to realize or maybe to trust stress and that it would all work out? Because as we come up in our lives, stress could be overwhelming if we, if, you know, if we aren't used to it just because it's new. Mm -hmm. And as we're building this kind of creative resilience, it takes some time to trust that, oh, it's gonna, it's actually gonna yield something positive and I'm equipped with everything I need. And these stresses are constraints just like any other creative constraint and it allows me to actually get some traction because it's in a sense friction. But what was the, what was the time frame for you to get to that place where you could kind of like say, bring it on? That's a good question. I probably within the past few years or so, I feel like potentially other people feel this way when you're in your twenties, you don't really have, you're, you're very busy with like everything and trying to figure out your life. And you don't have a whole lot of self-awareness to realize that you have agency within this context and that you can, you know, take a step back or control part of it, or, you know, just kind of pick and choose things. You just feel like life is happening to you. And so like getting into my thirties and um, I started training Kung Fu about seven years ago, it'd be seven years ago this September. And I think that it had a huge impact on my life, especially the past few years, because it teaches relaxation during critical moments, really stressful, potentially life-threatening moments. How can you be relaxed? And you can only be relaxed if you're aware of the areas in which you're not. And that is not something our society teaches. It's not a Western idea of being like, hey, relax. But usually when we say relax to someone, it's like an order and mm -hmm. it's condescending, you know? Yeah. Um, and so the more I've trained Kung Fu, the more I've been able to identify stress and to be like, is this useful stress or is this something that I don't, you know, really necessarily need to address and I can just like let it go. And so I think that probably within the past few years, I, I've been able to like befriend it, befriend stress and realize that some things are gonna be, you know, anticipatory stress. That's gonna be stressful, but I know how to handle it. I can see it coming. And other times, 
within the past few years, I've been able to like take a step back. I had a daughter two, almost two years ago. And man, it's like you're rowing a boat and you have to figure out what goes out of the boat because you can't bring it all with you. And that's been helpful and refining. Yeah. I see a little banter in the, the chat, like the idea that like, relax, just relax. Like that ever helps anybody? You're yeah. Like, no, yeah. that's nobody ever so taught fun. me. Yeah. Oh yeah. What a great idea. It didn't even occur to me, but now that you've brought it up so eloquently, I think I finally will relax. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it is uh, a skill that we have to practice that we just don't really have a whole lot of information on how to do that. I'm sure there's much more love and compassion behind our uh, sentiments of relax to our fellow humans, but it definitely, it doesn't give us much, you know, many places to go. So. Mm -hmm. Garrett, you want to chime in and share a little bit about your take on, on stress and creativity and the, the intersection or the relationship? Yeah, I definitely, I, you know, I <clears throat> thrive on stress. I, it sounds weird, but um, kind of the same thing like Eleanor was saying is like, you get into this um, flow when you have a deadline or you have something like I've been in the same situation where I was writing a poem for my friend's wedding. And I wrote it like I finally wrote the poem like, I tried for days before, you know, but it actually came together maybe an hour before the wedding. Um, and, and it, and I felt good about it. And it was like, because it, it, I don't know, there's something about like, I wouldn't, you know, they, they say there's like a lot of creativity that can be found in procrastination, but I feel like you can't really say procrastination. It's, it's, it's everything that's encompassed in that, um, in that moment of, when you are um, working on a deadline or you, you're um, under kind of this pressure to get something done or to work through a problem. And it's, you, you get into this like crazy, like creative flow. Um, and you've, you know, for me, it's like, I've, you know, I work on, I start writing poems on my phone or like in my notes or in my journal. Um, and they're just like pieces of poems and pieces of ideas. And, I don't ever fully flesh those out for sometimes months. Like I, I can't just sit down one day and just like write a poem, like be like, I'm going to write a poem this morning. It's going to be shit. Um, and so it's like, these ideas are always with me and I'm walking around with them um, and working through them. And then it comes to a time where I'm like, okay, it's built up this, this thing that I've been thinking about. I need to like, I need to let it out. I need to finish it. Um, and that's the, just the stress of like having to finally finish that poem after I've already gone through all these like ideas and notes around it. And that's, I think, when I actually come to a good poem. It's, it's something that I've been noodling for a long time and the stress of like finally needing to just like get it out of my body um, helps me uh, release it. I don't know. That sounds weird, but... <laughs> Mike, Eleanor, you want to expand on any of these thoughts? Otherwise, I got a, a final question that I'll queue up and then we'll get to sharing some of our, or some of your art. Go right ahead. I must yeah. have any Curious time. about, historically, you can share one or two projects or two or three or whatever, whatever but strikes you, but <clears throat> what has been one of your favorite unexpected works of art that came out of stress over over your career that you might not have anticipated showing up if it hadn't been for stress? Was it an event? Maybe it was an actual, uh, you know, it was, an, it was an event where you performed or perhaps it was the, the work of art itself. Well, the one that comes to mind for me is this poem I wrote called Ali Ali Oxen Free. And it's something I've wanted to do for a long time. It's a 10 minute poem. And I had to combine all these different writing approaches that I had never used at once before. I was helping um, someone edit a book and this festival was coming up that I was supposed to perform it at. I didn't have a lot of time. And it was just like, again, the perfect pressure cooker. And it was this huge release of just self-actualization and you know self-deprecation and just everything. And so yeah, it's called Ali Ali Oxen Free, and it just felt so good to write this poem and get it off my chest and um, perform it in the woods to people. And I didn't know how I was going to be received because it's so personal, and you know everyone's silent because it's ten minutes. It's asking a lot, and afterward people were like really open to it, and that felt awesome. 
That's great. Ali Ali Oxen Free. Mm -hmm. It's on my website if you want to watch it. Mike? Yeah. Um, I think like a, a, a lot of my art pieces uh, have to do with like different, I guess, like stress or emotion that I've uh, been at in, in, in that at that time. Um, my most recent project, uh, Creative Vintage Dreams, uh, the music project that I released, um, it was really uh, kind of me exploring who I was within those different moments, uh, within who I am, my background, uh, my lineage. Uh, and, and so much of it was kind of me going through like a depression. And then within that, having stressed on actually finishing the project, um, just because I had been working on it for so long. I had been working on it, I believe, like two years at the time. Um, and I started having stress on like completing the project. And that actually became fuel. And the reason why it became fuel was because, um, you know, it, it really motivated me to like finish out the concepts, put together like the actual vision that I wanted to release the project under and, um, you know, manifest that vision that I had been sitting on for so long. So. Uh, art artistically and creatively so much of my art I feel like it engages uh, these different levels of stress and anxiety uh, of releasing and finishing um, honestly just about everything I make is born out of some sort of stress because um, like I think just part of that's just my process of how I approach my writing is like building it up until like I need to finish creating that thing. Um, so I, I can't say that there is a, um, is there like one project that comes to mind specifically, except for kind of like my ongoing work, which is just to continue trying to um, explore poetry and explore language and come up with like uh, interesting ways to, um, to get at like these difficult questions, right? Um, I think that's, for, for me, it's, you know, putting name to what it is that I'm afraid of um, and then finding a way to um, make that tangible um, in, in it, into an image and into music and then, you know, find some sort of lining that connects that with like a common, um, you know, like a common worry or a common, um, kind of common ground with someone else um, so that they can understand where I'm coming from. So if I think of like one thing that my greatest artistic achievement, I think it's, it's just the work that I'm still continuing to do uh, with like the obsessions that I have. So every day I'm like surprising myself and I'm like, oh, this is a really good poem. This is like the best poem I've ever written. And then like a month later, I write something else that really surprises me and excites me and it's like the same thing. So I, I, it's hard to say like one thing that's the greatest poem, but I do remember, um, you know, I've worked a lot I, about like writing about loss and grief and um, memory and how to remember people and memorialize them. And what's the best way to do that? You know, cause people are so complicated. And I just remember writing this one poem um like a few years ago that I was like literally weeping while writing it like it was coming through in a way that was so profound for me um that that has been a moment that I've chased um ever since so there's I, I would say that's probably the greatest experience that I've had um you know writing through a stress or writing through um like grief and then looking for that every time I create, um, you know, not necessarily to weep every time I create, but like make myself laugh out loud or make myself experience like some sort of joy that I'm like, wow, this is the, the most warming feeling in my body. Um, and just keep chasing that every time. Um, cause it, it, it really is like a drug. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And it's, a, you consider it a, a chasing of that or a, like a discovering of it. Yeah, it's a disco it's chasing the discovery, like the creative discovery. So writing through, um, you know, using art to to write through these questions and to write through, um, you know, these these issues or these stresses. And um, 
you know, the discovery of, you know, how, you know, when you have that kind of epitome, um, epiphany moment, that's, it's, it's really profound. Um, and that's kind of, I'm always chasing that feeling. I hear that. Yeah. All right. If uh, we're in a good spot, we might shift our, our attention to a little performance from each of you. So uh, I picked two short poems to recite for you all. And they come from different types of stress that I've encountered. And the first poem um, was a deadline type of stress. And uh, you all know who Adam Lerner is. He was the director of the MCA. Yeah. Really talented, smart guy. And he left his position at the MCA last, uh, the Museum of Contemporary Art last summer. And uh, I was like, well, let's do a poem to sort of send you off. And he's like, cool, there's this dinner. You should come and recite it. And I didn't know anybody. And the dinner was in a week. And I was like, cool, no problem. <laughs> and so fortunately, I was able to get this poem out. And um, what really got me on it was giving myself the parameter. Usually, I don't like to work with too much of a classical structure. But I was like, I got to have some boundaries here. So I picked a sonnet. And so I wrote him a sonnet and it helped too to like, he was really celebrated for his intellect. And of course he's like really smart dude and has done some cool stuff, but I really wanted to celebrate his heart. He has a really big heart. He's a really good, really good guy. And I wanted to like focus on that. So I wrote this poem for him. It's called Animate Sonnet. <clears throat> oh, for today step away from the organ light whistle while it turns the laborers right and say i know but i don't knowing's not required Holding a flame at the advent of night. And so I'll agree now to be a being on the ground who breathes as complete as a color scheme of white and white and white and green. It's summer's eve, and all we need are dynamite and tambourines. The rotating rotary rings. I answer a parting greeting and speak the words we say to mean that i see you when you see me the cusp of any anything the silence once and twice believe and then we blink and bid farewell a wishing best the cosmic's well that what is lost reveals itself that what it costs repays the wealth a bleeding heart is not a wound it's animate it's human tuned to meet one is to be renewed to be part of the many who. Thank you. I'm telling you. Thanks for the golf clap. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be standing up if I could. Well, no, I mean, no, no. I, I, I appreciate it. It's just so yeah. funny. Thanks, everybody. Um, it's just so cute. It's like, <laughs> like I'm at like a tea party. So speaking of tea party, I'm gonna have a sip here. So I'm very thirsty. Oh, thanks everyone. Um, but I have another poem that I wrote that was uh, kind of like the stress that I'm not terribly fond of, um, just like re relational stress and you know, just having conflict with people that you care about. I mean, it's inevitable and it's exhausting, but I like to think I've gotten better at navigating it. And, um, since we're all thinking about Christmas, um, <laughs> I thought I'd recite this one. It's called Mary Sonnet. And I wrote it last Christmas. It was like a couple days before and got in a, like a pretty good fight with someone I love very much and close with my family. And fortunately, we talked it out the day before Christmas. So Christmas itself was like hot chocolate and peace. But like leading up to that was not cool. And I'm sure a lot of people have that. There's just like I don't know what happens around Christmas or holidays. It just like throws everybody in each other's business and the fireworks happen. So this poem came out of that. It's called Mary's Sonnet. <clears throat> I got on a sonnet kick. <clears throat> 
in case you hadn't noticed. I've written like six now at this point that I really like. <clears throat> Dim, dim, dim the lights and conjure up a fireside. We pass the citrus brandy and sang our carols out of key. Oh, Mary, Mary, what's it mean? A div kind of happy. Oh, Mary, Mary, all the same. I know your face, forgot your name. Believe, believe, believe I do in ghosts and snow and God and you. Then why can't we be merry? Beneath the boughs and bells and reeds, a candle sets the spirits free. I know the words I got to sing. <sighs> Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Eleanor. Yeah, happy to share some stress everyone, poems. Everyone is clapping. Thanks, you don't have to clap it's just so cute well, like, it's awesome you appreciate it it's great <laughs> yeah thanks for taking the time to listen yeah wonderful okay um let's segue to our friend garrett here and when he's ready set us up with whatever you want to set us up with i'm all ears <laughs> all right um Actually, I want to read, I want to start with a poem that's not my poem. Um, I wanted to share this at some point because, you know, in like preparing for this, um, you know, I started trying to just read a lot of poems that have dealt with stress or dealt with things that, I mean, most poems are working through that kind of stuff. And there was just a poem that I read, um, I've read it before, but like it really resonated with me with what's going on right now. Um, and I just wanted to share that it's, it's from Adrian Rich. It's a short poem. Um, what kinds of, what kind of times are these? There's a place between two stands of trees where the grass grows uphill and the old revolutionary road breaks off into shadows near a meeting house abandoned by the persecuted who disappeared into those shadows. I've walked there picking mushrooms at the edge of dread, but don't be fooled. This isn't a Russian poem. This is not somewhere else but here, our country, moving closer to its own truth and dread, its own ways of making people disappear. I won't tell you where the place is, the dark mesh of the woods meeting the unmarked strip of light, ghost-ridden crossroads, leaf mold paradise. I know already who wants to buy it, sell it, make it disappear. And I won't tell you where it is. So why do I tell you anything? Because you still listen. Because in times like these, all you have to listen at all. But because in times like these, to have you listen at all, it's necessary to talk about trees. And so this, this poem is kind of, I don't know, I was reading it this week and um, I don't know if it resonated for anyone else, but um, it really hit home for me of just try, trying to find um, new ways for um, getting people to pay attention um, to stuff that is going around, that there's too much, right? She's addressing like, there's, we're, we're heading towards this, this place of dread and this place of truth, um, but people are not paying attention to it. And in order to make some attention, she has to pay attention. She has to talk about something that they might be interested in, like trees. Um, and so I took, so I've been writing a lot. Um, I think Dave wanted me to share, when we talked about this, he said, share something that you've been working through um, or a piece that you've created out of kind of the stress of the current times. Um, and so I've been writing a lot of poems um, that are like letters to people and different objects and, and 
um, and things like that. And so this week I actually just started taking pieces of all of those poems because a lot of my stuff is still fragments. Um, and I actually put this together for you guys. Um, I don't know if, uh, if it's working yet, but it's, it's very raw. Um, and I was kind of riffing on this um, idea of, because in times like these, to have you listen at all, it's necessary to talk about trees. Um, dear, I'm writing to tell you that for the first time in my life, I've dusted the top of my refrigerator. So strange, the settled pieces of us, sticky with grease and steam blooms from an oven well used. I've noticed also how dust collects in the window sills, tiny dunes in the corners huddled in prayer. The trees outside the windows are still. Dear, you wouldn't believe the things I've discovered, the spring inside my home awakening under quarantine and in the eyes of a lover, a new language, familiar, yet I can't place it. There's music in the way we dance around each other in the hallway. And I must tell you, dear, I smell earth in the sofa. When the music of a city is shuttered in quarantine, a field mouse can be heard shuffling in the leaves for spring shoots of sweet pea and fallen crabapple blossoms. There is prayer to this settle, as there is prayer in the new rituals cooling our breath. It's Tuesday, dear, and another black man has been killed by police officers. Knees pressed into his neck as if trying to put the man back into the earth, but the earth has been full for too long, so I hold this ritual in my body. It carries me through the morning as I give names to the trees outside, Brianna, George, Elijah, Ahmad. Dear, I'm writing to tell you that it's okay to sit with the silence of a morning. I'm writing to tell you that it's okay to let fear crack in your throat. It's okay to just listen, dear, to bacon frying in the neighbor's kitchen, to spring grass pulling up the soil. Listen for the trees whispering in each other's hearts, the soft beats between beats, trees we must keep naming and watering through folds of self-reflection and hope. Listen for the language of snow, for the dream in waiting for the dough to rest between folds. See these comments coming in. People like that. It's really stressful writing this. <laughs> but I think that's kind of what I was getting at is like I wanted to put something on myself this week because I had to experience all of it, you know. <laughs> mm. Loved it. I loved it. Yeah, bravo. Bravo. Okay. Thank you to G for sharing what he thought was fragmented, but it played really nicely together. So good job, dude. Mike, do you want to take us home with one of your your pieces? I saw that you're back online if you're Yeah, I'm back. Uh, I'm back. Um, yes, uh, first I'd like to thank Eleanor and, uh, and Garrett for sharing their words, uh, very inspiring, um, actually very soothing as well, just because, you know, we're talking about stress and, you know, a lot of my moments today has been a little bit stressful and, uh, I think good art always has a tendency to like put you back in a place and maybe, uh, center you and look at a reflection. So I appreciate that. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do before I shared my piece is to actually break down the definition of what stress is. Um, stress is a feeling of emotional or physical tension. It can come from any event or thought that makes you feel frustrated, angry, or nervous. Uh, stress is your body's reaction to a challenge or demand. In short, burst stress can be positive, such as when it helps you avoid danger or deadline or meet a deadline. And I think that uh, I wanted to share that, that piece uh, as far as the definition, just because, you know, as we're actually talking about it, um, I think it's really important for us to think about how it can be utilized as energy, you know? Um, we can look at something as negative or we can uh, be alchemists 
and convert that energy into positivity. And um, that's much of my journey in the ways that I've been creating um, my project that I'm currently working on. I'm working on a project right now called Earthseed. And um, the idea of Earthseed is um, just thinking of new, right? We're planting seeds. All of us are planting seeds right now and um, in hope for new mindset, uh, new direction, and everything that's currently happening within the tension of where we're at right now. Um, it is very, you know, um, it can make you anxious for sure. But I think that that's where we have to kind of convert the lens and the ways that we see it. So yeah, this, uh, this piece that I'm going to share with you is called Better Days. And I wrote it while I was going through some hard times. So um, yeah, better days. You can find me in the garden, time ticking, speak with God, plant a seed into the soil, grow better days. And if we're living in the moment, God willing moments own it, we can elevate our hearts in better ways. Well, now I see the light, vision shine so bright. God just give me sight, shine bright soul. Now I see the light, vision shine so bright. God just give us sight, shine bright soul. I had a moment, had to own it, maybe sculpt it, make it right. Isolated, home alone, while in the darkness, gaining sight. My inner fight laid down a bite. I crept the night and found my soul. Paid the toll, wrote the scroll, talked to Jesus on the go. Now I know, now I grow. Now I'm elevating visions. Now I'm walking in the moment while they're scared to make decisions. Not to mention found possessions, some possessions possessing me. Asked some questions, learned some lessons. Now I'm walking in the know. There he goes again. The dopest Ethiopian, curly hair, bronze skin. Vision never was a trend. It's crazy how the spirit bends. It's crazy. You can find me in the darkness, time ticking, speak with God, plant a seed into the soil, grow better days. And if we're living in the moment, God willing moments own it, we can elevate our hearts in better ways. Well, now I see the light. Vision shines so bright. God just give us sight, shine bright soul. Now I see the light, vision shine so bright. God just give a sight, shine bright soul. Welcome this mission called Lost Love, caught up in a hot buzz. Wait, am I living or caught in yesterday's dreams? He runs with kings addicted to dream fiends. I'm starving, life black carving, alien to this life like Martians named Marvin. Darling, let's make it to the sun before the world ends. Documented in the journal. Warn all your girlfriends. Camera out, paparazzi, all the people. Occupied to be equal, maybe happen in the sequel. Hold my scars in my left hand, vision in my right, third eye infrared to see the hate out at night. For the moment we can live out of space, get a vision for some love, or at least how to taste. Through to the side like it never really mattered, thoughts scattered. I'm just trying to find me and we, a short line to the destiny to be. You can find me in the garden, time ticking, speak with God, plant a seed into the soil, go better days. And if we're living in the moment, God willing moments own it, we can elevate our hearts in better ways. Awesome, man. That was awesome, man. Yeah, comments. There we go. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. Oh, man, I got shivers from all of you guys. Thank That's you. And I'm glad you were able to come back online so we could see the just the energy and uh, yeah, we all navigated the stress of, of technology so we could still show up together. So thank you for thank you for that, Eleanor, Garrett, Michael. Thank you for pouring your hearts out, making time for the community, and sharing your your craft.